Hey guys, welcome to a bonus episode of Let's Play Red Dead Redemption. This episode is going to be kind of special because this is something I had to come back and take a little look at. But we're going to be looking at the Game of the Year Edition extra goodies for the game. Now, I am playing the Game of the Year Edition of the game on the PS3. And one thing in particular that was exclusive to PS3 when this game launched was the Solomon's Folly Hideout. And I mentioned this in the playthrough too. There is a gang hideout that's exclusive to the PS3 version. That's Solomon's Folly. Now, this is also available in the Xbox 360 Game of the Year edition of Red Dead Redemption. So if you have the Game of the Year edition on the 360, this will be here too. So, for all the Xbox users, that's how you get it. So, anyways, we're here at Solomon's Folly. If you come down here to Solomon's Folly near Gap Tooth Ridge, you'll notice that there's a gang hideout here. And, like I said before, I <laughs> when I was playing this game, well, back, back in 2012, 2013, when I was doing the main playthrough of this game, I didn't have the PS3 version, and I had the vanilla copy of Red Dead Redemption on the 360, so this gang hideout did not exist in my version. So, we're going to go ahead and take a look at this one. But, Solomon's Folly is kind of an odd gang hideout because, well, we're do not, you know, just clearing out, you know, the bandits from the hideout itself. We're also doing a task for this person. They stole a safe uh, from Armadillo, from the bank of Armadillo. They st stole a safe. Now we're going to go ahead and clear out this, this gang hideout here, as well as take this, this, uh, bank vault back. So, we're going to go ahead and take the bank vault back. I almost died here. <laughs> but, that's pretty much it. So, this one's kind of odd for a gang hideout, because you're used to just, you know, killing all the enemies here and completing a task. We're Now we're doing that, but this one's kind of a combination of two missions in one. And we're going to have to play defense a little bit. So, we're going to go ahead, we're taking this, this cart over to Armadillo, and we're defending off from the Walton Gang, so it's just like a bounty. You go and take the safe back, and the Walton Gang's gonna come back, and they're gonna try to get the safe back from for themselves. So you gotta go kill them while you're doing that. But like I said before, this gang hideout is not 100% required if you have this on your console. This one does not add a percentage whatsoever. The only little thing that you get for it is, oh, you get honor for completing it, you get fame for completing it, and you get money. That's about it. There's That's the only reward you get. You don't get anything else. You don't get a trophy. You don't get anything. So, honestly, having this as extra content, I don't really see this being a big selling point on what version of the game you should play. You're not missing out much for doing this one, even though this one's an extra, you know, little thing to do. And I almost, I almost just ate the floor with that, <laughs> that little wipeout there. But yeah, you're not missing it if you have it on the 360. If you have the vanilla copy of 360 version like I did when I did this playthrough, you're not missing much with missing this one. So don't fret that the PS3 version has extra stuff in it. I don't want to get into console wars and stuff like that, but I just don't see why this was a selling point for the game on the PS3, to be perfectly honest, because it's just extra stuff to do. Just one little thing. That's it. It's not a big deal that you're missing this out. But that's pretty much it in a nutshell. There's a couple there was a couple things that were exclusive on the PS3 when this game launched back in 2009, 2010? Was it 2009, 2010? Yeah, somewhere around there. It was around those two years, and one of the biggest thing that they tried to sell is the PS3 version is better because it has more content on it. Eh, that wasn't really a big selling point for me because I didn't. Get, well, I only had a 360 at the time, so that when I when this game came out, I only had the 360 for 360 anyway. So I bought the 360 version. <laughs> so that's pretty much it. it this was a big selling point for getting the PS3 version of Red Dead Redemption, was the fact that it has this gang hideout and a special uh, outfit, which we'll be taking a look at. But, honestly, I don't see what the appeal was. Uh, now, if you have a Game of the Year edition on the 360, you get this gang hideout too, it's on here. 
See, it's just like, it's kind of silly because it's like, it's not exclusive anymore. If you got the 360 Game of the Year edition, well, it's right, it's there too. So, it's just like, it kind of lost its exclusivity, if you know what I mean. Now, my next question is, because I haven't even tried this, is if you go to the store, can you purchase the Solomon's Fall of Gang Hideout? I, I don't think you can. I think it's just on that version and that version alone. But, you know, that kind of bugs me a little bit. It's just like... Having console exclusive content, it's not a big deal. I know like a couple games are doing it now to make you buy a certain console and it's just like, is that really such a big selling point for me? Not really. I don't see what the big deal is. It's, I know this is back then, but that's not a big selling point for me when it comes to choosing a console version of a game. I'm, I'm going to buy a game based on what console I have, and if I don't have a console at this point that plays the said game, then I'm just gonna choose it. That's not gonna... It, that's not gonna tempt me to buy the console anyways. You know, it's just like, oh, but Red Dead Redemption has a, you know, an extra gang hideout in it. You should buy a PS3 for that. <laughs> it's not that big of a deal. I'm not gonna... It's not gonna change my mind on a lot of things. But am I for some people, so it, I, that's why I'm showing it off right now. Now, trying to park this thing is kind of a chain, a pain in the butt because it's like right here next to the bank. But there we go, we delivered the safe back to the banker. And now he's happy. And we cleared Solomon's Folly. That was pretty much it for that gang hideout. And the, like I said, this is exclusive to the PS3 version and the, the Game of the Year edition of the 360 version. Those are the only two things that you can get. It's on the Game of the Year edition of the PS3, too. I should mention that, too. So. But you don't get anything, so you don't get fame and honor, money. That's it. Nothing more, nothing less. You're not missing out on it. <laughs> and it doesn't even add add any percentages to your game, game completion score, so it's not a big deal. But anyways, we're going to be new, moving on to the new DLC costumes. Now, like I said, if you have a Game of the Year edition you're going to have a few more outfits than what I had when I did my playthrough. There's going to be a few outfits more that you have to do some requirements to do. The first one's the gentleman's attire. You actually get this one right off the bat, so you're going to be in a you know, sleazy business outfit. The next one is the deadly assassin. And as you can see, these are the requirements in order to unlock it. So you have to do, you know, look, search it's the other place and everything. Now this was the PS3 exclusive outfit, the Walton Gang's outfit. This is exclusive to the PS3 version, just like Solomon's Folly was. And it's in the Game of the Year edition of the 360. So if you got the Game of the Year edition, you'll get this too. So this is in here too, and it's exclusive to the PS3 version again. <laughs> Same reason as Solomon Folly was. But, if you come over here and look at the other ones, you got the Expert Hunter. And by the Expert Hunter, it has the, probably the most ridiculous challenge ever. Kill a cougar with a stick of dynamite. Throw a piece of freaking stick of dynamite at a cougar and watch it blow up. <laughs> I always thought that was funny. It's hard enough to kill a cougar. Now you gotta kill a cougar with a stick of dynamite. You know how inaccurate that thing is. <laughs> but, the Expert Hunter... It's a special outfit. It has, I think, a ability that allows you to sell your meat and stuff like that at a higher price and furs and stuff like that. And this is the Savvy Merchant. This is the next one. The Savvy Merchant is... It allows you to sell products and stuff like that for a higher price, I think. That's what it is. But, anyways, these are the requirements to get these. So, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. That's, that's all the DLC costumes that you have to unlock in the game. Now, I'm showing you guys what the requirements are for these, and now we're going to actually kind of show you guys what the costumes look like with John having them on. So, let's go and do this. I'm going to show you what the Expert Hunter looks like. I'm going to go ahead and switch it over, and John's got a raccoon hat on it, and he's got, you know, hunting clothes and everything. He looks like a hunter. <laughs> So, that's pretty much that in a nutshell. He looks kind of odd in it. <laughs> but we're going to go ahead and swap over to the Savvy Merchant. 
And John looks like a paper boy. In my honest opinion, he looks like a paper boy. A new one of the newspaper guy that, that stands around selling his newspaper for a dollar. But we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna show off the next one. Come over here and show this one off. This is the Deadly Assassin. He kind of looks like Clint Eastwood. This is this. I think that's where they got the idea for this costume. This is Clint Eastwood's outfit for like his the old western movies like The Good, Bad, and the Ugly, and Fistful of Dollars and stuff like that. He really does look like Clint Eastwood in this costume. It looks really neat. Now, I don't show off with the gentleman's attire because you automatically get it. So, it's it's not a big deal. I know I only show off the ones they have to actually work for. I don't know why I didn't, but it's it's whatever. Now, the costumes you don't have to unlock them, they're not for 100%. But now, we're going to go over to the Tomahawk Challenges in the single player game from the Legends and Killers DLC pack. If you have the Legends and Killers DLC pack, you will have extra stuff for single player. Not not too much, but you'll have two extra challenges that you have to get, two extra ambient challenges. The first one is the or the the Legends and Killers one is the Tomahawk challenge. Now rank one, you have to just simply go to Mazanita Post and buy a Tomahawk from the store. If you buy that, you will complete that challenge right off the bat. That's like the easiest one. Now if we come over here to rank 2, we have to kill an enemy with a tomahawk as a throwing weapon, a melee weapon, and from horse horseback. It's just as simple as it sounds. You have to throw a tomahawk, it's a throwable item, and throw it at an enemy and kill him. Now after you do that, you have to go and find an enemy and kill him with a melee weapon. And I accidentally killed him like that. Come over here. You get close to it, and you aim it, and then you, then John will automatically just hack that person with the tomahawk. It's it's kind of simple how to do the melee attack, and then finally just have to throw a tomahawk on horseback. Then you got rank two tomahawk mastery. Now for these challenges I'm showing you, you only have to get to rank five to master them. So it's not rank ten like the other ones. Keep that in mind. Now rank 3, this is probably the hardest one. Kill a flying bird with a tomahawk. I would honestly suggest clearing out tw uh, two crows on uh, two crows gang hideout. And as soon as you clear it out, you know that the vultures, like, you know, they fly around here. Just get on top of tr uh, tw uh, two crows and then chuck it. It's really hard. You can't use dead eye on this. You cannot use dead eye. Oh, that's another thing I need to tell you guys. That's, you can't use dead eye on that. It's really hard. This challenge is really hard. And so that's the easiest way you can do it. Now rank four, you have to kill five enemies in a row with a tomahawk without missing. And by the way, melee attacks do count. You have to just make sure that your tomahawk is, will be able to attack and kill the enemy right off the bat. You have to make sure that your shot counts. Because if you miss a single shot, you have to start the challenge over again. And it's really, really not that hard. Like, when you kind of judge how the arc is with your tomahawk, you will automatically get it. So just don't throw it unless you're absolutely sure it's going to hit. Kind of like I do. And like I said before, melee attacks do count. So if you, you're not too confident in that, you could just go up and just whack people with it and make sure that you hit them. But there you go, that's rank 4. Now the final rank of the Tomahawk Challenge is you have to clear an entire gang hideout with only using a Tomahawk. Honestly, I would suggest going back to Two Crows and trying this out. Or Twin Rocks, I'm sorry. I keep saying Two Crows, this is Twin Rocks. I am so sorry about that. <laughs> but if you come over here to Twin Rocks, they have the least amount of enemies in the whole entire all, of all the gang hideouts. So you just have to be careful whenever you're using these, because using a tomahawk is very vital, and they're very expensive weapons too, so if you lose one, it's really hard to get it back at Malzania Post because they cost a lot. But you can salvage a tomahawk from a defeated enemy. If you throw it at an enemy, you can go search their corpse, and you will be able to you know, pick up a tomahawk that you just threw. 
Now, granted, if you throw it on the ground, you can't just go over and just pick it up. It's not. It's, I don't understand that kind of logic. That kind of is silly, if you th if you ask me. He's like, oh, I threw the tomahawk. Oh, it's in the wall. Let me go pick it up. I can't pick it up. Oh, well, crap. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. It's just like you waste a tomahawk. They kind of force you to waste a tomahawk. I guess that's the way they can. That way they they use like, oh, well, you, you lost it. Now you have to go buy more. A little bit kind of a challenge for the the player itself, but it's whatever. But like I said before, Twin Rocks is probably the easiest challenge or easiest gang hideout to clear with only using tomahawks. Uh, what I would suggest is you you'd have to go up to uh, the rocks and then you'd have to go and climb them because they are climbable. You can climb up uh, climb up them and kill the two guys that are sitting on the rocks. That's like the hardest part. Is going up here and to kill these guys because they're just sitting there and they, they're gonna be aiming at you and they're gonna be firing at you like these guys are but just be careful when you're doing that it's kind of reckless in a way but it's whatever uh, another gang hideout I probably would suggest would be Tezra was because that's like they're all there so be careful whenever you're doing these challenges trying to honestly those are the two gang hideouts I would honestly suggest it's just these these are not that long and they're like the easiest one they have the least amount of people that you have to deal with so trying to go through any others is just a pain in the butt because you're gonna run out of ammo real quick and see how I missed <laughs> I, I managed to get that guy on the on the flip side though he, he was running away I was like oh I, I missed you no I actually hit him see I searched that corpse and you actually got a tomahawk pack but there we go we cleared out uh, Twin Rocks, and we did it all with a Tomahawk. So now we have completed Rank 5. Once we re uh, complete Rank 5, then we have completed all the Tomahawk challenges for the Legends, of Legends and Killers DLC pack. So Tomahawk Mastery complete. Now what you get for completing this is... Eh, you get something special. You get a trophy, like I did. It's called Axe, Maxer, Axe Master. And for completing all rank 5 of Tomahawk challenges, you can actually... You become a Tomahawk Master. And if we kind of... If it pops up, I'll go ahead and tell you here in a second. There we go. Congratulations. You are now a Tomahawk Master. The chest in your safe house now have extra Tomahawks for you. So whenever you go into your safe house and you open up a chest, it'll have tomahawks in there for you. So that's what's your reward for doing that. Now we're going to move on to the explosive rifle challenges from the Liars and Cheats DLC. If you have the Liars and Cheats DLC, you will get another set of ambient challenges to do, just like the tomahawk. Rank 1 is simply go to the store in Blackwater and buy the explosive rifle. The explosive rifle is $5,000. It's a lot of money. Now, you probably saw me use this weapon in the, in the Undead Nightmare playthrough, and I had it. The explosive rifle is exactly what it does. It shoots enemies and explodes. Now, rank two is you have to kill five enemies behind cover using the explosive rifle. It, as you guys can see, you can't hit... Don't hit enemies directly. That's not what it's asking. You have to... Kill enemies that are hiding behind cover by blowing up their cover with the explosive rifle. Now, the explosive rifle is actually really a freaking expensive weapon to manage. The ammo ammunition for the explosive rifle is so much money. It's like $300 a bullet. It's ridiculous. It's a lot of money for this stupid gun. And this gun is wonderful. It's a powerful powerful gun it'll kill anything that it shoots but honestly it's just like I'm spending so much money every bullet I shoot it's a lot of money down the drain but trying to kill all these enemies in cover is a nightmare I went to Nusalinda because there's a lot of cover there and a lot of enemies are going to be using cover so just be mindful of that you have to kill five enemies while they're in cover so I'm trying to get this. Uh, these enemies are trying to get them in cover. As soon as I get in the cover, then I'll shoot it. See, like that. And then these enemies right here. As I 
Here we go. Okay, so Explosive Rifle Mastery Rank 2. There we go. That one's actually kind of hard, but... <laughs> that's, that's that one in a nutshell. Now we're going to go on to Rank 3. This one is kind of hard, but there's an easy way to cheese this a little bit. Rank 3 is to kill three enemies with one shot with Explosive Rifle. That sounds really hard and really RNG-based. But what you could do is go to a gang hideout, hog tie three enemies, place them all near near one another. As soon as you do that, and then you get close enough, you can kill all three of them in one shot with explosive rifle this way. This is probably the easiest way to do this. Do not aim your rifle at a person. That does not count. Because if you shoot an enemy with explosive rifle, they blow up and they explode in a meat shower. That doesn't count, so be sure to aim around them. Now, rank four with explosive rifle is to kill two enemies with one shot of explosive rifle. This is as hard as it's going to as it sounds. I've had a hard time with this challenge because trying to get them to be in the same spot when I shoot this darn thing is a nightmare. You're probably going to have the best luck by shooting a pack of wolves as soon as they they spawn. As soon as they spawn, just like that pack of wolves down there. Go into Deadeye and then shoot around them. Like so. There you go. Explosive rifle ranked for it. Finding a pack of wolves in the Great Plains is probably the best way you could do this. And I can't find any way easier to do this. <laughs> Honestly, I, it was all RNG based. Now, rank 5. You have to complete the game for this. You have to kill an enemy with explosive rifle in a gang hideout while wearing a U.S. U Marshal uniform. A U.S. Army uniform. So you have to beat the game and beat Jack. So as soon as you do that, uh, go to any gang hideout and then shoot an enemy with the explosive rifle. So if we come over here and trying to kill, I'm not trying. Uh, see, killing them directly is bad. You have to kill them around them. As soon as that, as soon as you do that, you're now explosive rifle master. Explosive ammo is now half the price at all gunsmiths, and you get a trophy, a master exploder. <laughs> So now we're an explosive rifle master. That's pretty much that for everything in particular I was talking about with the DLC and single player challenges. Now I've got a little fun thing I want to show you guys. Oh, these are these these are all glitches I found playing the PS3 version of this game. I the PS3 version is kind of like the buggiest version of Red Dead Redemption that I played. I didn't have as many problems as I did with the 360 version. But as you guys can see, that person is walking in place. He will not run anywhere else. He's like running in the same spot. And he's just like, I'm not gonna... I, I'm not going anywhere. I found this guy in Mexico for some reason. <laughs> but if I aim my weapon at him, he's just like, Oh, nope, I'm gonna shoot you now. And then finally, I had this happen. I don't know how this happened, but my horse was inside a cart. <laughs> I don't know what happened, but it's kind of weird how he got there. And then I just, I just sat there, I was like, what the f... And then he got just slid out. I just like, okay, that, that's um, on a couple of occasions I found in this game. I found a lot of glitches in this game that I didn't even record, and I should have. But, anyways, guys, that was this DLC tour of this video. I want to thank you guys for watching this playthrough, and <laughs> thank you guys for watching, you know, the Undead Nightmare playthrough as well. Now, I have a couple, th I have one more thing I kind of want to do for this game, but like I mentioned at the end of the last episode of Undead Nightmare, I'm going to probably do that in eh, a couple months from now. Uh, there is one more DLC pack that I need to kind of cover, and that's the Outlaws to the End pack. I'm going to be doing that with a partner, because it's cooperative missions and everything. Now, whenever I do this playthrough, I'm going to, going to be doing all the cooperative missions in that pack. That's what I intend to do. So, with that, guys, now we have covered, you know, the main game. We've covered Undead Nightmare. And we've covered a little bit of Liars and Cheats and the uh, Legends and Killers DLC. So, with that guys, I will see you guys in the next video I do. Take care everybody.